O'Neill Outside is presented by Rockwell Tools, tools that rock. Hello again, everyone. I'm O'Neill Williams, and welcome to our program. If you've watched the show over the years, you've probably heard me say before, the number one category of bass fishing baits is the plastic worm. You can catch fish shallow, deep, big bait, small bait, slow moving, fast bait, dark bait, light, doesn't matter. If you know how to catch fish and you use a, ba a plastic worm, you will get more bites and catch more fish. Today, Travis Johnson is bass fishing with a plastic worm. Let's see if we can learn something and join him in the boat and have some fun too. It's all today on O'Neill Outside. Got it. Oh man, he threw it. He's a little guy. That was the first cast with the worm. I've been fishing a uh, white spinner bait. I fished all the way down the dam with a white spinner bait and didn't get a bite. And I said, you know what? I knew when I got in the water that I should have been throwing a worm. This water is kind of hard to tell right here. It's real muddy right now. Just a green little pumpkin seed or watermelon trick worm. Threw it over there, bumped it twice and got a bite. So I actually just said, you know, always go with your instinct. Well, there you go. Let me see if I can't do that again over here. I mean, I just barely moved it. Wasn't a very big fish, but we're supposed to keep everything out of this pond that's under 15 inches. That's management. You get a lot of the small guys out and let the big ones get bigger. So he would have been a keeper probably. I just didn't get to hook in him good. Oh, come on. There he is. That's another one of those little guys, but I got the hook in this one. All right, now this fish, like I was talking about a minute ago, he's a little guy, but in this lake, they've had the guys come out and shock it and tell them exactly what they needed to do. And they said, every fish under 15 inches comes out of the lake. So normally we don't keep largemouth bass, but this guy is probably gonna get fried up. Let the, take the little ones out because all they're doing is eating your bait fish and let the big ones get bigger. O'Neill Outside is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops, Boat US, Loyal Pet Food, the Whitetail Institute of North America, Southern Link Wireless, and your local Toyota dealer. Come here, buddy. That's a decent one. Now look, I want to tell you while I'm getting this guy in here, if I don't lose him. Oh, that first little fish I caught, and see, that's they're get, getting better. But that first little fish I caught, if you noticed, he was up on a bank like this. I had a little bit of cover, and I was fishing right up under that bush right there. Just under that little bit of cover, flipped the worm in there. And I actually thought I was hung up then. <laughs> but this one is over the limit. He'll go back. This is one that we want to get bigger. But you can see, there's my worm. He knocked it way up the line. And there's that true turn cam action hook. I thought I was hung up because it set the hook himself. but. Golly, oh, man, I, <laughs> I had too much line out or something. I just couldn't, did not get the hook in him at all. But they are, let me see, hang with me a second. That worked, that was way too easy. Let me try that again. 
That was way too easy. But I'm fishing from where I caught the first fish. I'm in a different part of the lake, but I'm still fishing, looking for that same thing with the same bait. And there's a stump right there. Get up there, they're right up on the bank. And let me see if I can do this. It never works when we got the camera rolling. <laughs> But like this time of year, the water is in the turnover phase, which the turnover phase is only a few days on a lake or a pond like this. Whereas on your bigger lakes, it takes longer. But uh, at night when the surface temperature cools off, that water goes down in the warmer water because it takes longer for it to cool off. Same thing in the springtime, it takes longer for it to warm up. So it kind of flips the water over and that's what kind of gets everything fired up, such as the crawfish come out of their little summer hideaways and things of that nature. So the bass are out trolling the banks looking for crawfish and worms and everything else. Everything's just kind of moving around this time of year. So yeah, it's the middle of deer season, but it's a good time to go bass fishing. I can't believe I missed that fish. He was running back toward me. He picked that worm up, took off running with it, coming right back toward the boat and I just couldn't catch up to him. I'll find another one, watch. Here's a surprising fishing tip, and you're going to love me for it next winter. What's that? Well, the next time you go fishing in the wintertime, the boat slides off the trailer, it's tied up to the dock. The bunks, the carpeted bunks, whether it be an artificial turf or a carpet or whatever the case might be, the bunk, what the boards that the boat sits on, two things. Spray it with real magic. Yeah, spray the bunks with real magic. It makes them slick, makes the boat go in and out, off the bunks, trailering is easy, and if it's cold, it will keep the boat from freezing to those bunks. I know I fished one time, it was a tournament. <laughs> it was three degrees, the high that day was nine. We had to rock the boats to get them off the trailer. Had I sprayed it then with real magic, I wouldn't have had to do that. Keep real magic in the boat, in the truck. There's lots of uses for real magic and that is your True Turn Tackle Tip of the Week. That jerker was under the boat. That's another one. Another one of those little guys, I think. I got my, well, he might, he might make the cut to go back. I don't know. But again, I'm gonna point you over here. Look familiar? Same place I caught the first one is the same place I caught this one. And so I will make sure that he is and no. He's not big enough, so I got more fish to eat. Chill out. Well, you can tell the sun's starting to go down. We got a little bit later start than what we had originally planned. We got here and the gate was locked. Go to the lock box to get the hide a key and the hide a key's open and there's no key in it. So, a little bit of sit, sitting around time. <laughs> How you like that? A little bit of sitting around time and we just got a later start, but the fish are still biting. And that's another one of those little guys. They're going, you guys are gonna make me work tonight. I'm gonna have to clean some fish. But we have found what they are doing. I'm gonna be extremely repetitive here. They're on the same, they're right up on the bank, the same spots, same worm, didn't change a thing. And I got that guy hooked pretty deep, so I'm gonna get that out, put him in a live well, and catch another one. Oh, he come on. 
he got me at the top of my swing again. He just kind of picked it up as I was picking up slack and all of a sudden it was heavy and I didn't have a, uh, yeah, I got the drag too loose. You know, go figure. You guys will think this is funny. I was just talking about how it's deer season, but you know, take a break, go bass fishing. I'm getting text messages on my phone. A new buck showed up at the hunting club, sending me pictures off a trail camera and I'm over here bass fishing. Go figure. You know, it's just my luck. But if I catch a big old 12 pound bass, then it'll be worth it. Oh, golly. I just can't get a hook in a fish. But there, I know it's getting dark on you guys, and I may have to finish this up in the morning. O'Neill will be here in a little bit. I was hoping to have a great big mess of fish, which we've got several in the live well. They're biting pretty good, but just in case it gets too dark for you to see me, I'm gonna keep fishing. I know it's getting dark, so I'm gonna make this short. I wanna make the point that I only had about two hours, maybe two and a half hours before it got dark to fish this afternoon. So once I found what the fish was biting, I stuck with the same bait, same color, fishing in the same structure look, same depth of water, just at different spots of the lake. Yeah, I only caught five or six, but I only had a couple hours. It's five or six fish I wouldn't have caught if I'd have been messing around trying 500 different things. So once you find something that works, stick with it until it doesn't work, even if you've only got two hours to fish and I'm gonna keep it after it. A power line right of way. Is that a good place to deer hunt? Well, let's find out from Brandy McElright. She's with Georgia Power and she knows all about this sort of thing. What do we need to know? There are several things that you should consider. The first is who owns the property. There may be an underlying property owner different from Georgia Power and Georgia Power just has what's called an easement to cross the property or Georgia Power may actually own the property. So you need to keep that in mind when you're looking into permission for hunting. Okay, so I have permission, so now I can come and build my blind. So if you have permission mm. from the underlying property owner, you still need to consider Georgia Power's rights of use of the right of way. So to be compatible with our right of use, you need to keep the stand in the outer 10 feet of the right of way. It should be no higher than 15 feet and it should be portable, meaning that it's not permanently affixed to the ground in case we need to move it out of the way as we're in here working on our power I lines. I see. How about building right under the power lines? That is not allowed for good reason. Mm, certainly. Safety issues. We don't want deer stands right under the power lines. They should never be attached to our structures. They really need to be kept in the outer 10 feet of the right of way. Okay. So knowing the rules, the safety issues, still a good place to deer hunt you knowing those things. There's more O'Neill Outside coming up, but first, let's thank our sponsors. Year One, Tracker Boats, Bug Band Repellent, Bojangles, O'Neill Outside Spices and Seasonings, and by ExploreGeorgia.org, the official Georgia tourism and travel site. Now, let's join O'Neill for this week's Big Green Egg Wild Game and Fish Recipe. Today's wild game recipe on the Big Green Egg is a really a good one because you get to use fish that you may not fry. This is fish chowder. Now, I've got two pieces of striper here, which I took out of my uh, food saver. I'm using the O'Neill Outside Fish and Seafood Seasoning. And I'll tell you all about that. Do both sides, and if you've seen it before, you know I like liberal spices. I mean, spices are cheap. Flavor, that's indispensable. Put them on, on the big green egg at 350 degrees. It should only take about six minutes. Internal temperature of the fish at 177 degrees. The big green egg is at 350, and I'll show you the next step. 
Since you've been gone, I finished cooking the striper and now using the big green egg with a convector, I put on a Dutch oven and I've sauteed carrots, celery, onions and so on and it's really clear. It looks good and smells good too. Now I'm going to add all the herbs which is oregano and garlic. You'll get the recipe off the website I'm sure. Some pepper and just a little bit of Tabasco sauce. This shouldn't be spicy fish, okay? Tomato paste and pureed tomatoes and water. Makes for quite a quite a dish, quite frankly. It's for certainly more than one meal. Then finally, the fish that I already cooked, the striper, I'm going to chunk it up. It's good firm fish. You can if you're not a fisherman and you're not, if you don't have striper already vacuum sealed in your food saver, then uh, get some halibut or something like that from the store. And, because it'll work, a good firm white fish. And now I will stir and I will simmer and cook this at 350 degrees on the egg. You know, it is an oven now because of the convector. And in 35 minutes, we eat. <laughs> Bring it to a boil and let it simmer for 35 minutes and you'll have great fish chowder. Want the recipe? Go to O'NeillOutside.com, BigGreenEgg.com, recipes. Big Green Egg, the ultimate cooking experience. Now, a sneak peek at next week's show. Need a net or what? I will, I guess. Explain the strategy, Tofield, as to why this patch of, why this point, why this patch of grass? Why this wind direction? <laughs> Tell well, me about we got, it. We got wind directions out back and we have current on the shoreline. So the game plan is, now we hit other banks that wasn't productive. <laughs> so if they're reading the handbook, this is where the fish should lay. Should lay right here facing the current, catching little shrimp as they come by, little crabs. All right. Huh? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Nice little red there, cuz. Ooh, man, what a pretty color. Yeah, beautiful colors. And yeah. a good day, 20 or 30 of those, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, no doubt. I mean, it's still early yet. We just started fishing reds. So we throw in, you know, artificial baits working these shorelines. You can catch them with live bait, you know, plastic, like that little jig you got right there. Mm -hmm. You know, it works. Casey's classic runner. Casey Ashley won the Bassmasters Classic using this bait uh -oh. with this color trailer. Ah, uh -huh, there you go. Because it was clear water. Right. Clear water, light right. day. Right. Clear Here bait. with us today, <laughs> we have darker. to use it. We have to use a dark color yeah. because we're in dark water. Right. Clear right. water, light bait, yeah. dark water, dark, dark bait. bait. That's Casey's Classic Runner, there you and go. it's a Road Runner and roadrunners catch fish. Yes, indeed. Yes, they do. <laughs> so let's keep whacking it. Yes, yeah, keep you on betcha. We'll put them in a the hole. Yeah. Looking good, you're looking good, O'Neal. Mm-hmm. I love, I love redfish. They bite. They're always hungry and they're always biting. This might be a good one here, Tofield. <laughs> ah, nice. Oh, you yeah. got a man there, cuz. You got a man? Mm -hmm. You got him a man on there. Nice. <laughs> so this won't be wasted time here. Mm -hmm. How many guides do you have? How many boats? Well, we got about 10 guys that we actually kind of say full-time guys, but down here in the bayou, we actually can handle a group up to 100 people. Oh, man. We got 30, 30 guides down here that are, that are available and ready to fish. Do they all you know. sound like you? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yes, so. <laughs> Pretty much all from down the bayou for sure. But uh, that's a good fish there, cuz. Yeah, I believe you. That one's gonna be long in this show. With this. We're gonna have to cut this tape sooner yeah. or later because there's no way that would be all in this fight. But that's cool. It's a good, probably got a good 10 pound redfish, maybe. Maybe. Maybe 15, 20 if it gets off, but that ain't gonna happen. Right? If he gets off, he's 30. <laughs> Woo, you now you talk. That's good. He's here. Oh, he's doing it up. Mm hmm. Well, besides all the guys we got, and we mm -hmm. got the lodge also. The lodge sleeps 52 people. Okay. Got a meeting room, they can hold up to 100 people. So we got a big group actually coming, to 40 coming tomorrow. Uh, we come down and have a little meetings and a little seafood ball and go out fishing and have a little fun. Is that right? <laughs> there you go. 
There you go, cuz. Oh, all right, Mr. Red. Oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> That's a good one for these waters, isn't it, Toby? Oh, yeah, that's about the biggest you're going to get inside here. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's beautiful. Beautiful fish there, O'Neal. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm proud for him, though. Casey's classic runner. Yes, indeed. With Tofield. He's O'Neill's redfish runner right now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'll claim it. There you go. Yeah, good, good job. Everybody off. Yeah. Cool. Good job. Nice. Is that a keeper? Or is he in the slot? Oh yeah, he's a keeper. He's a keeper. Yeah. And you lie, one over twenty-seven. That's him. Mm -hmm. Oh, you won one, <laughs> one over twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Yeah. How so much does him. that fish weigh, Tofield? Guide weight? About twenty. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> real, <laughs> real weight. The real weight? Probably twelve. Okay. Well, I would say so too. Yeah. You gotta give this a try. New Orleans Fishing.com. Bring a group and fish with Tofield. There you go. Mm-hmm. Get something like this, boy.